I'll say welcome to One Heart, One Mind Center for Spiritual Living. And welcome, Jesse, who's going to kick us off this morning. Welcome, Jesse. Hello. Good morning. Let's do it. The classic, beautiful day. You all know it. Dance and sing along. Because it is a beautiful day. I look in the mirror and I see myself. I don't know how I do it every day. Standing up on this big blue rock, not knowing what I'm doing here. There's a reason I believe it, keep on keeping on my way. I wake up early and I see the sun. I don't know how it does it every day. It rises up and then it falls again. Born only to die away. Each time I open my eyes, that's when I get to decide how I'm going to show up and show out in this life. Uh, everybody get up. Oh, it's a beautiful day. Everybody get up. Oh, it's a beautiful day. I get up, I get up, I get up, and be grateful. I'm up, say I'm up, I'm up, and I'm thankful. Get up, I get up, I get up, and be grateful. I'm up, I'm up, and I'm ready to play. Yeah, look at the clock, it's running day and night. Got no control in those little clock hands. A little soldier just marching through time. I'm so glad I am not a clock. I am alive and I can choose to dance. Each time I open my eyes, that's when I get to decide how I'm going to show up and show out in this life. Because we got to show up and we got to show out. Huh. Everybody get up. Oh, it's a beautiful day. Everybody get up. Oh, it's a beautiful day. Oh, get up. Oh, get up. Oh, get up. And be grateful. That's an order. I'm up. Say, I'm up. I'm up. And I'm thankful. Oh, get up. Oh, get up. Oh, get up. And be grateful. I'm up. I'm up. And I'm ready to play. Playing all day. Everybody. Get up, wake up, it's a beautiful day. Rub the sleep from your eyes, everybody. Oh, get up, cause it's a beautiful day. Everybody get up, oh, cause it's a beautiful day. Everybody get up, cause it's a beautiful day. And yes, it is. We'll say yes to that. Woo. <laughs> That's lovely. And I would like to welcome Lisa Lazaro to, to do a little opening prayer for us. And she might have some, some words. Yes. Well, why don't we pull ourselves together with that that wonderful sense of get up. It's a wonderful day. And knowing that it is a wonderful day that spirit has given us, that we have the opportunity to make a choice to, to bless it and to bless the people in our life and to create that level of joy and play that that song implies that we can have, no matter what we feel like we look like in the mirror. And so anyway, knowing that there is only one life and that we are that life and that we each are an individual piece of the puzzle of life that we each have a role to play and that we don't have to play each other's role but that we can we are guided to be that expression of spirit that is our innate soul's calling and that is because we are each an individual expression of the one of the one life the one energy that flows through everything in the world, 
all of the the beasts and the humans and the stones and the leaves and the seeds, everything, everything is a part of that whole that we are a piece of and that we all are connected with one another and have have gifts to give one another. And it's like we're all brothers and sisters of the same same family. And so knowing that this is so, I speak my word for oneness, which is the topic today, that always that always inspires my love and my and and my attention in this world that has so many different expressions of life and being able to find that one core central link that ties all of us together that is the spirit and the light and the love that is the soul of creation. And so I release my word knowing it is done and knowing I speak it into the law and knowing that each of us is blessed by the experience of oneness and the opportunity to recognize it that is given to us by belonging to one heart, one mind and by the guidance of Reverend Michelle. So I release my word into the law and I release by saying, and so it is. And so it is. So anyway, I um, I had lots of different thoughts this week in terms of oneness, um, because that I, you know, and in terms of, because I like to look, look at things and see what other people are saying and so forth. And so the most recent thing, which I think will give you a laugh, is that um, I, I hit the the um you know the, the internet and put in we are one and the first thing that pops up is this song by pitbull which is is uh we are one and it was the song for the world cup and it's like it is so it's so great to see an expression like that in in a thing that is so um, seems to be so far away from what we would say is spiritual as he's, you know, dancing there with these half-dressed girls that are kind of twerking and, you know, it, it, it's just it's just a whole different way of looking at things. But it was, you know, it's like then they flash to the crowd and the crowd is just all, we're one. And there are many different countries there. And so anyway, that was one thing. And then I realized, you know, that that the same kind of feeling I had at the interfaith service last week in terms of having all these different expressions of faith and underlying it all that spirit of connection and love and 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 joy even at being together and uh that that to me was was a real level of of oneness then um on an, in another way i i had uh, what was it? I on the YouTube there was uh, something: the law of divine oneness, which is the essential truth of the foundation of life. Basically, that everything in the universe is connected. That includes the stars, the planets, stones, nature, everything, and that we are also to are connected to this source and force. And there are. Um, there are connections that we we just never see. We don't even know where our what we're now calling our vibration, how far out it reaches in terms of of, of connecting us to everything. Um, so it's important that we pay attention to what we're sending out into the world because it makes a difference. Truly makes a difference. So and then we also need to be aware of separation. And the it, separation is not a, not necessarily a thing. It's something we create. It is it is um, the behaviors and actions that we take out of fear, shame, anger, guilt, or judgment. And so that's why it'll be important to begin to find a mindset of of love and forgiveness, and be coming from the heart more than the mind, essentially. And so then, um, and, and in terms of thinking of my own, my own experience with, with oneness with spirit, I, I had an experience a long time. The, the first time I really had this kind of experience, it was, I had been at a breakfast and the guest speaker was an Indian medicine woman and she had us chanting 
And it's like after this, after the chanting was over, because I was in a wonderful space, and I went to the cove because it was in La Jolla. And I went to the cove, and I was standing on the the grass there, and it was like all of a sudden I was one with the universe. I was a I was a bird who was flying. I I mean, it's like it, I can't really even articulate it, but it was that divine sense of truly being connected to the universe. And I think a number of you also have had that kind of an experience. And it 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 does kind of change your life in terms of how you look at other people and the rest of the world. So um, anyway, what else do I have here? Um, okay, the, the last thing I want to share is related to uh, well, one thing I want to say is gratitude, about gratitude and looking at gratitude. I realized that gratitude is a path to oneness or can be a path to oneness. You know, you can be grateful for your, your new car, but it's like as you begin to, to expand your level of gratitude, it's like when you begin to expand it to other people, it, it creates that level of connection with other people or with nature, for instance, if you're doing that. But the final thing I wanted to talk about was related to my own Thanksgiving and the fact that it was um, was a wonderful family gathering. Um, and two of the important people were not there, my grandniece Cassie and her brother Lawrence, and they both had gone to Thanksgiving with their, um, their others, their spouses. And I think most of you know that my grandniece Cassie is pregnant and she's due to deliver in January. So essentially her brother Lawrence had said that he was going to go to his girlfriend's this year because he wanted to be here next year for the baby's first Christmas. And he also told us <laughs> by phone or no, I guess it was shared with me anyway. He's already taken CPR so that he can um, babysit the new baby. And it's like I realized my whole family is just in this space of connection, of love and energy for this child that's coming in. And it's, it, you know, it's going to be the first grandchild for a bunch of the people involved. And um, I think my brother is going to jump out of his skin to tell you the truth. But at any rate, the, I, the, the connection of it, and it was so, um, what I thought about was how that's the way it is for babies. Everybody, unless they have a problem, is con connected with a baby. You just see a baby and you feel, you feel something and you have no judgment for the baby. And the baby is sort of engaged with love. And it's like, I think we have to try and hold on to that as that person gets to be older or just to flash back and remember what a beautiful little creature it is who is just there as a part of the circle of life and some other part of us to be to be connected with. And um, so that's, that's basically what I had to say today, I think, and um, that there's just, well, I think the other thing was then, which comes back from my experience with kids, was the importance of that love in the beginning of a child's life and how it totally frames them, which then make me think of Renata and the gift that she gives all the time. I'm sorry. <laughs> it just moves me, truly. Um, that because of the care that she gives to those little foster babies and gives them the love that is not available in person at that point in time, you know, with the hopes that the person that needs to be parenting will get themselves together. But at least in the beginning, they get what they need to get a good start. So that's it. I'm just, just full of love today. <laughs> Thank and you, Lisa. Thank you, sweetheart. Oh, well, wonderful things to say. Beautiful, excellent prequel to the talk. <laughs> oh, good, good. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, sweetie. You're welcome. And now, Jesse. Jesse. Bonjour. 
Ah, let's all take a deep breath together. Inhale. Ah, exhale. That love is... It's so funny, I was thinking this last night, I was thinking... We all think that the... The core of life is like this... Redemption arc. That we have to earn that love and approval somehow, and that's like the reason we're here and it's so silly because it's already here <laughs> the love is already here and we can feel it in our breath we can feel it in our heartbeat so I just invite you to welcome that in and breathe with me I don't want to give words to this Anything you have to interpret will only eclipse the heart of it. I just want to send it in sound with a wavelength clarity. Mm -hmm. Nothing I could ever say will resonate the same way that this love does in me. Inhale, exhale, breathe. Somewhere in the beat of your heart, there I am. Somewhere underneath all the war-torn believing There you have always been It's something like a melody It's something like a song And it sings itself and it's never wrong Oh, everywhere it plays for me It's always on repeat It's the love song of everything Inhale, exhale, breathe. It's not just there in my body. It's not just there in the thoughts that I think It's there in the roots, in the skies and the seas In the eyelids, the irises, the wind and the wings In the will be, the ever was, the reason and the just be Cause I am the song that I sing Inhale, exhale, So oh, lovely, really. I almost don't want to speak. It's so meditative. <laughs> That's beautiful. Thank you so much, Jesse. It's such a gift. I just love it when you, when you come. Hmm. Oh, so let's just take a moment <clears throat> and breathe that in. So lovely. So again, I want to say good morning and welcome to One Heart, One Mind Center for Spiritual Living. In real time, a replay, you're welcome in this space, and we're so happy that you're here. You know, in this, this month, we've been, uh, we've been focused on seeing God in everything, as um, 
Lisa reminded us so well of seeing God in absolutely everything. We've been seeing God in the mundane, in the everyday stuff, in the things we call sacred, in everything. You know, I, I spoke about grace, which is our willingness to be open to see God in all things and to receive the good that, that spirit infinitely gives us. And, and last Sunday, we moved into Thanksgiving in the holiday season. And, and I spoke about how gratitude keeps that natural flow of giving and receiving alive in our lives. You know, how gratitude is an attitude of living, a creative consciousness. You know, it opens us up to what's possible in infinite mind and in divine mind. And this morning, I kind of what I kind of like to do is kind of pull it all together by recognizing that all of this is true because everything is connected. Everything exists within the one, the mundane stuff, the sacred stuff, all the stuff. We are one with life and life is one with this, with us. And, and we're inseparable. We're inseparable from our source. We, we are in living in this oneness. And, and, and it empowers us to bring meaning, to bring love, to bring true joy into our human lives. You know, we're empowered to wake up our awareness of God, you know, to, of, to our awareness of the divine presence that's all around us and to really experience it, you know, up close and personal, to experience the divine in everything. Um, I wanted to tell a story. Uh, you might have heard the heard stories with that character from Muslim folklore called uh, Malala Nasruddin. He's he's known as a philosopher and a jokester, and there's all kinds of stories with him in it. But one of these stories has Nasruddin uh, resting under a huge, luscious walnut tree. He's been traveling, and he sits down to rest. And as he rests, he's taking in the scenery around him, and he seals, sees the big field in front of him with these big, huge pumpkins that are growing on these really delicate vines. You know how pumpkins have these really kind of thin vines. And the vines are snaking across the field. And, and then he looks up into the walnut tree and he, he sees these tiny little walnuts growing in this big, sturdy, strong uh, tree. And, and he notes to himself how, how strange Mother Nature is that plump, pumpkins should grow on such spindly little vines and tiny little walnuts grow on this strong mighty tree and right about that time a walnut falls out of the tree and lands right on the top of his head and he looks up at the tree and then he looks over at the field with the pumpkins and he says to himself oh mother nature you are so wise <laughs> And, and we can see and experience the wisdom of nature all around us in the natural world. You know, and I, I don't know about you, but when I witness it, it, it tends to kind of reconnect me with that innate wisdom that's within me. Because I know that the same source that's running through all of nature is running through me. You know, it runs through everything. <laughs> and I know that it, it kind of gives me this sense of, of belonging, you know, of a belonging to life, you know, that I have a place in all of this, you know, that my life matters and that I, I'm empowered to receive fully these gifts that life is offering all around me. And I'm also empowered to give, to contribute to life, you know, through my thoughts and my feelings and my actions 